Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy, and in this video we're going to look at how we apply the bending equation, specifically to beams, in order to calculate bending stress and radius of curvature. Now we have previously seen how we can calculate bending moments for different beam configurations, and now we're going to take what we've learned there in order to calculate bending stresses. Before we do, it's important to understand the nature of bending. Now pictured on the screen here, we have a beam. We have the cross-sectional end view on the left, and we have the front view on the right. Now if we were to place this beam under tension, so if we were to apply a force here and here, aiming to stretch the beam, then the stress would be very easy to calculate. The stress would just be equal to the force divided by the area. So we have the force being applied, and we have the cross-sectional area of the beam. Now the reason that formula can be used when the beam is placed under direct loading of tension or compression is because that applied force is going to be evenly distributed across the area of the beam. But that won't be the case when we place the beam under bending. So if we consider the beam when placed under bending, we have a load being applied to the beam and at the two supports of the beam, we're going to have a reaction force. So we're going to have the reaction at the left-hand support and the reaction at the right-hand support. Now I'm sure you can visualize what's going to happen with the beam, but if we exaggerate this, we would expect the beam to take on this kind of shape. And in doing so, again, I hope you can visualize this, the bottom surface of the beam is going to be placed under tension and the top surface of the beam is going to be placed under compression. In effect, the bottom surface is lengthening, whilst the top surface is shortening. Now what this means is that somewhere in the middle we have a plane or an axis which is neither under tension nor compression. So at the center of this beam, we have what's called the neutral axis. No stress will occur at the neutral axis, we have maximum compression on the top surface and we have maximum tension on the bottom surface. So let's add our neutral axis to our original diagram. And now we can consider how the stress is distributed across our beam. So as mentioned before, maximum compression occurs at the top surface. and maximum tension occurs at the bottom surface. I'm just going to represent this as a profile, like so. And at the middle, no stress occurs. That's our neutral axis. So what we end up with is a stress profile, where the stress increases as we move upwards, away from the neutral axis, and the stress increases as we move downwards, away from the neutral axis. The difference being above the neutral axis we have compression and below the neutral axis we have tension. So this brings us to the reason why we can't calculate the stress by dividing by the cross-sectional area of the shape. The reason is because the stress isn't evenly distributed. The stress is higher at the outside edges and zero at the centre. So now we can introduce our beam bending equation. So our beam bending equation takes the following form. We have sigma over y equals m over i equals e over r. So when we have these three part equations, we can use any two parts at a time. If for example, we knew the bending moment m and we were calculating the stress sigma, then we could use the first two terms in the equation. If we knew the stress sigma and we wanted to calculate the radius of curvature r, then we would need to use the first and third term in the formula, and we'll see some examples of this. So just to clarify what each of these terms are, sigma is our stress, and stress is measured in pascals. Y is the distance from the neutral axis, and I'll explain this in a moment. So we have distance from Na, neutral axis, that's going to be measured in metres, we need to make sure we work in SI units. M we've seen before in earlier tutorials, that's our bending moment.
measured in newton meters i is a new variable called second moment of area and our units for second moment of area are meters to the fourth now the reason we use second moment of area is as we explained before the stress isn't evenly distributed across the beam we have our elastic modulus which is a property of the material that's also measured in pascals and finally we have our radius of curvature Now radius of curvature is also going to be measured in meters, it's a radius, it's a distance. So a couple of important things here. If we want to determine the maximum stress acting on the beam, then we would need to use the maximum bending moment. And we learned how to determine that using shear force and bending moment diagrams in earlier tutorials. The other thing to note is that if we want to find the maximum stress, then we need to use the maximum distance from the neutral axis. Now distance from the neutral axis, if we refer to our diagram, is the distance from the center of our beam. Recall that the stress increases the further away we move from the neutral axis, therefore the maximum stress will occur on the top and bottom edges of the beam. And we'll see some practical examples of this later. We have the second moment of area. Now there's a formula for calculating second moment of area, and we won't look at the derivation of this, but the second moment of area for a rectangular section beam is calculated using BD cubed divided by 12. Now because we want the second moment of area in meters to the fourth, we need to make sure that both B and D are expressed in meters. Now B and D relate to the cross section of our beam. So if we refer to our diagram in the top left hand corner, B is the width of the cross section, this distance here, and D is the depth, here. Now it's really important that we get B and D the right way round, otherwise that will affect the I value for our beam. I can give you a visualization of this. If you take a ruler and you try to bend it, across its narrow section like so, then you'll find that the ruler is very easy to bend. But if you turn the ruler around the opposite way, like so, then although the cross section is the same, you'll find that the ruler is much more difficult to bend in this orientation. So it's important to get B and D the right way around. We said that E was the elastic modulus of the material, and that's just a property of the material which determines its elastic behavior. And finally, we have radius of curvature. And I'm just going to clear some space to explain this. So if we were to place our beam under bending, then it's going to take on a shape similar to this. Now the shape that's drawn there could be mapped onto a circle. And the radius of curvature of that beam is the radius here for the circle on which that curve would map onto. So that's what we mean by the radius of curvature. And typically the values for radius of curvature are very, very high. So in this video, we've introduced the beam bending equation and the terms in that equation. And in the next video, we're going to look at how we can calculate things such as bending stress and radius of curvature for a given bending moment and beam profile.